Over the last few months, you guys sent me so many questions about holographic illusions in theatre that I thought maybe I made this video to explain about holographic illusions in theatre. Well, mainly what you do with a projector and some tool or some other half-transparent material in front of your stage. We all agree that your audience believes in the tricks of theatre if you just do the right thing. If you think about the content that you use and if you think about the illusion you want to create and mainly if you think about the material that you're going to use. In this case, let's see Wall. Not only is Wall dirt cheap, it is also the perfect material for those illusions if you're close up. In a theatre you might actually use a tool or a fine tool or some other material. If you have the budget, maybe go for the hologors, but it's a material that will cost you a fortune while creating a pretty believable hologram. The most important ingredient, however, is the content. You need to have content that fits the space and you need to avoid to tell the trick by revealing that there is material. So there shouldn't be any areas where the material is simply lit. Just reduce your images to a simple but really convincing 3D image. This is Eric. Eric lives in Blendertown and he runs a little theatre. Eric likes the big effects. This is why he has a holographic scrim in front of him. It's a hologos, or maybe if Eric's budget is a little lower, then it's just a piece of wall. But the mo most important thing is, it's semi-transparent. We can see through. So if we turn off the working lights, we can't see Eric because he's not lit. Let's put some side lights on him without touching the scrim in front of him. Now we see Eric. Eric has prepared some footage for holographic effects. Let's turn on his projector, which is sitting right in front of him, and see what he has prepared. Eric has read up on holograms and he knows that to achieve a proper hologram you need 3D footage that looks 3D but does have no background. Because where there is no light being projected you can't see the scrim. But we can see the scrim because, well, there's a lot of stray light. There is a problem with Eric's setup. There's this white floor that reflects a lot of light from the projection and every other light from him and the side lights onto the scrim. And we can see the scrim, which will actually destroy the illusion. So let's turn the floor black and turn off the working lights again. Now we see a lot less of the scrim in front of Eric and the illusion is almost perfect. But there is one huge thing behind Eric. It's the spill or the fall through from the projector. Because the projector projects its light onto the gauze or the tool or whatever he uses as a textile in front of him. And those fabrics let through a lot of light. So this light is being caught by the background. Let's turn on the house lights again and we see that his background is white. Mainly this is why we want to use a black background whenever you use a holographic illusion. Because we don't want to see that second image. It just doesn't look good from a close. Even if Eric makes his impression on cubes. So let's turn the background black as well. And while we're at it, use some material that has no gloss. Because gloss will reveal the rest of the light that falls through. Velvet or Molton or any matte material that is black will help a lot. So now we see Eric interacting with his cube, which is great. But sometimes you can't turn your background black because it is, well, it is just what it is. The solution is to move the projector up or down. In this case it's not possible because there is the floor. And then rotate the whole thing so the cube is being projected onto the gauze but also onto the floor. So now we can hide the fall through from the audience which is seated here 
or kind of, because there is still some stuff falling onto the background. But this is due to the architecture of this sample. It's pretty poor, actually. If the audience is seated below the actor, they won't see the floor. And so the projection will fall onto a ground that can't be seen. But at the same time, we will raise the light, the ambient light, that will actually illuminate the scrim. As we don't want that because it reveals the secret, it's always good to have a completely dark ambient and to always hide everything that could reveal the secret of our illusion. Now Eric seems happy because you can't see the scrim. You can only see his 3D illusion, even if it's a 2D image projected on a 2D plane in front of him. But if you're creating content that produces some 3D imagery, then you might get away with an audience that kind of understands that theatre is always about the tricks.